A new student at a middle school named Quan Daegun is bullied by his classmates. Because of his geeky face, he became the target of bullying. When Dagon told them to stop, his classmates beat him black and blue until the teacher finally came into the class. Unfortunately, the teacher also contributed to the bullying, and Dagon received no help as the bullying by his classmates was allowed to go unpunished. Since then, Dagon's life has been full of misery. Moreover, he doesn't have anyone to talk to about it, because he is an orphan. No one helped him, and Dagon felt really lonely at that time. During recess, a student saw a piece of paper on Dagon's back, and the paper said that Dagon had no mother. When the student who previously bullied Dagon admitted that he had done this, moreover revealing that Dagon had no parents, the student who found the paper became angry and beat the bully black and blue. Seeing this, Dagon realized that even bullies could still be bullied if they were weaker. When Dagon returned home, he looked at his emaciated body, understanding the fact that he had become the target of bullying because of his frail appearance. Thus, Dagon ultimately decided to become stronger, even stronger than anyone so that no one would be able to bully him. Since then, Dagon did not go to school anymore and chose to stay at home to focus on his practice. Dagon did it diligently, to the point where he didn't care how much time has passed, and his body had become taller, fuller, and more muscular. When Dagon finally returned to school, people were confused because his physique changed so drastically, and he also became very handsome. The girls even started to like him, but most of the guys just decided to stay away from him for reasons that are not clear. It turns out that all this happened because Dagon is known to have a bad reputation at his school. During his absence from school, Dagon would often spend his time going out and fighting with people he met on the street. One time, Quan Dagon's name became very famous in just one night after his big role in ending the Age of Blood in the Inchin area, where Dagon was able to end the prolonged conflict in just one week by beating up the people involved in it. Not only did he end the conflict, but Dagon was also considered the leader of the area, and no one dared to oppose him. Unfortunately, because of his actions, Dagon was suspended by his school so he couldn't take part in learning activities like a normal student. With him suspended for a while, coupled with his poor attendance due to not having attended school for a long time, Dagon has poor grades and is in danger of dropping classes. Therefore, Dagon is required to take a qualification exam to pass and temporarily has to take part-time jobs as a store crew at a convenience store to meet his daily needs. Meanwhile, because he was busy studying so he could pass the qualification exam, plus his part-time jobs, Dagon didn't have time to take care of himself anymore so he looked more like a middle-aged man. During one of his shifts, Dagon was harassed by a couple of young people who wanted to buy cigarettes and drinks at the convenience store. Strangely, even though the manager was there, the old man ordered Dagon and the young man to fight and solve their problems outside. When they were outside, Dagon gave him three seconds to escape, before Dagon finally beat one of the men there until he was unconscious. Shortly thereafter, the man's friends attack Dagon, but he easily defeats them all, leaving only one person who finally realizes Dagon's true identity as the leader of the Inchin area. Realizing that they could not defeat Dagon, the group apologized, and Dagon managed to end the conflict peacefully. However, unbeknownst to Dagon, a woman from the Golden Dragon Education Foundation managed to secretly record the incident and attempted to contact Dagon to make him an attractive offer. The women's organization is planning a project to deal with Iljin or the school bully by secretly sending someone to be in charge of another Iljin, and that person is Quan Dagon. In the end, he finally manages to enter high school at the age of 20 without having to take an exam qualification. Dagon enters high school as a transfer student, where on his first day, he gets into trouble for trying to protect the student sitting next to him from Iljin. Even though the bully had a very large body, coupled with the regulations from the Golden Dragon Education Foundation, which forbade him from committing violence, in the end, Dagon couldn't stand it and beat the Iljin black and blue. Not just one person, but Dagon managed to beat two people at once until their boss finally came, and he was no Manho. Unlike the previous two, Manho proved to be quite strong as he was able to bluff while attacking, something which Dagon complimented him on. What's more, Manho also has real fighting techniques, 
which several times managed to make Dagon surprised and think that the attack could have hit him if his reflexes were a little slower. Even so, Dagon proved to be able to beat Manho very easily, knocking him out with just three punches before his enemy finally fainted. From that victory, Dagon taught those Ilgins a lesson, and he promised to beat up anyone who dared to disturb his classmates. At first glance, Dagon may look scary, but he's sweet at the same time. It's just that, unknowingly, the fight between Dagon and Manho was recorded by one of the students, and then spread to other students until it reached class three students. After the commotion was over, the class finally started, and Dagon seemed to be very focused in class to the point where he ignored the female students who tried to tease him. Even when the leader of class two came in clashes with Manho, Dagon shouted at them, saying that they were too loud and he couldn't concentrate because of them. The sophomore named Kim Myung Jung was angry and tried to annoy Dagon, making Dagon angry and gripping his hand so hard that he cried in pain. After Dagon released him, Myung Jung attacked him instead. The attack was easily dodged, and Dagon countered with a punch so hard that it knocked him out in one hit, shocking everyone who see. When Dagon tried to continue his studies, a group of class three students led by a student named Sim Sangbo suddenly came and surrounded him. Even though Sangbo was much stronger than any other students Dagon had faced, he was not at all afraid, even boldly mocking Sangbo, who he thought was weak because he brought useless people with him. This angered Sangbo, and he told Dagon to meet him later after school, which only confused Dagon because he didn't expect his first day at school to be this chaotic. After that, Manho and his men unexpectedly decided to help Dagon to fight against Sangbo, because they would rather be led by Dagon than have to be sandbags for Sangbo. It's just that, even though Dagon didn't care about them, Manho and his men continued to follow Dagon wherever he went, even informing him about Sangbo's attack patterns. Because Dagon was with Manho and the others, they became the center of attention of the other Ilgins, and one of them even tried to bully Dagon, but he managed to hold back his emotions before a fight broke out. Dagon remembers his agreement with the organization that hired him, and no matter what happens, his identity must not be known, or else he will return to his previously miserable life. In this situation, Dagon decides to go out, but runs into the student who previously wanted to bully him. From that student, Dagon learned that Sangbo used his classmates as sandbags, and therefore he decided to stop this. Before his fight with Sangbo, Dagon beats up one of the biggest students, and he takes him down very easily with just one hard punch, provoking Sangbo to step up and face him. Moreover, Dagon's arrival in Class 3 has also attracted the interest of other students who want to witness the fight between Sangbo and Dagon. Once the crowd has gathered, and the space was prepared for the fight, Sangbo started it by sliding very fast to deliver hard and fast punches towards Dagon. Sangbo delivered consecutive punches which Dagon dodged, and then Dagon used the momentum to deliver a very hard counterattack towards Sangbo. Even though Sangbo had increased his defense, he could still feel great damage from Dagon's punches. It didn't stop there. Dagon took advantage of Sangbo's weakness, which was a boxer who relied more on punches by kicking his legs many times until Sangbo finally found it difficult to stand. Without giving Sangbo a chance to fight back, Dagon mercilessly continued to kick Sangbo, who couldn't avoid it because his legs were already incapacitated because of the pain. Sangbo could only defend himself in this situation until finally his back hit the wall, and he couldn't keep his distance from Dagon anymore. Everyone watching realized that Sangbo couldn't fight anymore and could only survive in this situation as if Sangbo had become the sandbag himself, with Dagon being the one to keep hitting him. Unable to hold on anymore after receiving consecutive punches from Dagon, Sangbo finally realized that he couldn't win, and then his body fell limp. But even though Sangbo was already defeated, Dagon gave him ten seconds to get back up and become his sandbag again. Over time, Sangbo became more and more aware that if he did not give up, then he would be even more wounded. Therefore, Sangbo finally gave up, admitting his defeat to Dagon which of course shocked everyone who witnessed them, not expecting that Dagon was so strong. It's just that some people think that Dagon is still hiding his main skill because he is aware of the attention of the people who witnessed the fight, and they will continue to observe Dagon from a distance.
More than that, Sangbo still couldn't accept his defeat, and he vowed to avenge Dagon later. Not only that, but Sangbo's defeat also became hot news at school. Even though it's his first day at school, Dagon has already eaten up three classes, causing the other classes to be wary of Dagon. Students at the school, especially the Ilgins, begin to pay attention to Dagon, with some of them deciding to make their move before Dagon eats up their class. Manho even revealed that regardless of whether he wanted to or not, Dagon would be involved in a fight he didn't want. Regardless of what Manho had said, Dagon planned to go home, but found the director's car parked in front of the school, and Dagon couldn't help but go with her. In the car, the director commented about Dagon causing a ruckus on his first day at school. When Dagon thinks there will be a penalty for his reckless actions, the director says that there is no penalty for Dagon, because the organization is thinking of changing their plans, and in the future, they plan to minimize the rules that could get Dagon kicked out of school. That way, Dagon thought that he wouldn't hold back anymore from fighting, but also on the other hand, he thought that he was being watched, or maybe a spy was sent to the school to watch him. Regardless, the director gave Dagon a new residence, which Dagon saw as a luxurious apartment that he would never be able to enter before. The house was previously occupied by the director and is currently home to Dagon, who also gets an allowance from the director for his daily necessities. The next day, Dagon was called out by the teacher because of the commotion Dagon had made the previous day. In this situation, a woman named G. Inna watched Dagon from a distance, thinking that Dagon had something to hide. Moreover, she had also witnessed the previous day that Dagon had connections with the director. When Dagon returned to class, he began to suspect his surroundings, thinking that there was a spy among them. His suspicions were mainly directed at his seatmate named Min Su, especially after Min Su strangely wore glasses, something he hadn't worn the previous day. But after Min Su explains his concern for Ilgen in class, which makes him prefer to wear lenses over glasses, Dagon's suspicions are temporarily dispelled. However, when Dagon was on his way home, he was secretly followed by Ji Inna, who wanted to know more about him. When Ji Inna wonders what kind of relationship Dagon and the director have, she suddenly witnesses Dagon being followed by students from another class who looked like a group of Ilgin. When Ji Inna follows Dagon, one of the Ilgin notices her presence, but thinks that Ji Inna is secretly following him. In this situation, Ji Inna was forced to pepper spray the Ilgin, and this drew the other Ilgin's attention to go toward her instead of continuing to follow Dagon. When Ji Inna was cornered and wanted to cry, Dagon come and helped her. Dagon finally couldn't hold back anymore and asked if the Ilgins had followed him this far. Instead of avoiding disputes, Dagon boldly challenged them to go to a quieter place. Even though the Ilgins and Ji Innas were confused as to why Dagon had acted like that, they just followed Dagon's wishes and followed him. When they arrived at their destination, there were already two Ilgin from other schools who told them to leave because they were already there. But after one of them mentioned Kim Wanwung's name, the two Ilgin decided to leave, also making Dagon realize that this was all Kim Wanwung's doing. After that, four people surrounded and cornered Dagon, with Ji Inna watching from behind them. When one of the biggest Ilgin smoked and blew the smoke at Dagon's face, Dagon became very angry and knocked his big body down very easily, then punched him in the face hard. With just that one punch, the Ilgin lost consciousness, frightening the other three Ilgin, but they had no other choice but to fight, or else they would be beaten up by Kim Wanwung. Because they took too long to start moving, Dagon started the attack first by hitting each of them one by one. Dagon's punches proved to be powerful and hard, to the point where his opponent was knocked out with just one punch. However, when there was only one person left, Dagon almost crossed the line as he could have killed them if he overdid it so he stopped the fight. The funny thing is that one of them even had a dream of being chased by Dagon while he was unconscious, further emphasizing how terrible Dagon's abilities are. When they all started to regain consciousness, Dagon ordered them to line up as he interrogate them. It's just that, unbeknownst to Dagon, the two Ilgin who were there before had witnessed what happened and immediately reported it to Kim Wanwung who couldn't believe that one person could beat four people at once. 
In this situation, Dagon also asked about what Ji Inna was doing here, which made her want to leave the place because she didn't want to get involved in this barbaric violence. After Ji Inna left, Dagon ordered the Iljins to bring someone named Kim Wan Wung to him the next day, which the Iljins complied with because they thought Dagon was more terrible than Kim Wan Wung. However, even though the third period had passed, Kim Wan Wung still had not appeared, so Dagon decided to visit him in class six. And when he got there, Dagon was approached by the queen of sixth grade, Beck Susie, who then slapped him until his glasses fell off because she thought Dagon was making a fuss in class. Susie, who had been nagging at Dagon, suddenly fell silent and was fascinated by the handsomeness of Dagon, who was now not wearing glasses. Not long after that, Kim Wan Wung suddenly appeared and beat up a big student named Yang Jinmo. With this, Dagon realized that this person was Kim Wan Wung. When Dagon wanted to confirm his identity, Kim Wan Wung admitted it while giving Dagon an intimidating smile. When Dagon and Wan Wung faced each other, the other students in the class just stared in fear. Even though people's gazes were now on him, Dagon didn't care about that anymore, and without further ado immediately aimed his punch at Wan Wung. Immediately, Dagon's punch was blocked by another student from grade 5 named Yu Jiseok. Dagon compliments Jiseok for being able to withstand his attacks, but that alone is not enough if Jiseok wants to take him down. From there, Jiseok realized that Dagon was very strong, and he wouldn't have a chance to beat Dagon. Therefore, Jiseok tries to divert the problem by saying that Dagon has no reason or evidence to accuse Wan Wung of being the mastermind. While Wan Wung continues to beat up Yang Jinmo for creating misunderstandings like this, Dagon realizes that he needs concrete evidence to beat Wan Wung, or else he will be the bad guy. Therefore, at that time, Dagon decided to retreat first to collect evidence that could bring down Wan Wung. On the other hand, after Dagon withdrew, it was shown Wan Wung was plotting something with another school to bring down Dagon, and one of the students from the other school wanted him to take Ji Inna too because he wanted to have fun with that girl. The next day, Yang Jinmo came to Dagon's class to invite him out as an apology. Not only did Yang Jinmo invite Dagon, but he also invited Ji Inna to come with him, but unexpectedly, one of her friends named Ara also came with them. When the four of them were brought out with Yang Jinmo, a group of students from other schools were already waiting for them by the side of the road. Both Ji Inna and Dagon became enraged by this while Ara knew nothing about what happened. Out of dozens of other school students, one of them who has the biggest body and is a ranker named Min Byungguan, intends to start a fight, thinking that he can defeat Dagon by himself. Dagon wasn't afraid at all, instead provoking him to rush forward and fight him. When Min Byungguan advanced to attack Dagon, in an instant, Dagon managed to catch the big-bodied Iljin. When one of them told Min Byungguan to tap out and surrender, Dagon didn't let go and instead strangled him to death, shocking everyone present because Dagon could kill someone so easily. Dagon already knew that the people there had the intention to kill him, so he would also have the same intention in facing them. In this situation, Dagon immediately ordered Ji Inna and Ara to stay away, while he would finish everything by facing the nine people there. Beyond everyone's expectations there, Dagon was able to defeat seven people there at once in a short time leaving the last two people to think that Dagon was not a normal human. When Dagon thought the fight would end soon, more people came to beat Dagon, one of whom even brought a baseball bat with the intention of using it to beat Dagon. As things got worse for Dagon, everyone was surprised by the arrival of Min Su, who brought Class 1's Iljin, Manho, and his subordinates. Not only Min Su and Manho, but Yang Jin Mo were also fed up with Wan Wung's treatment of him, and because of that, Yang Jinmo decided to help Dagon. He told Minsu what happened, and Minsu then told this to Manho, so, in the end, this situation happened. So the current situation is that Dagon will face two Iljin from other schools, while Manho and his subordinates along with Yang Jinmo will face eight people, and must at least defeat one or two people in front of them. Even though their enemies had guns, Manho and his subordinates also secretly carried guns in their bags so the person carrying the baseball bat was not a problem for them. In the end, Manho managed to prove his ability by beating up the person carrying the baseball bat very quickly. 
When the bully wanted to attack Manho, his subordinates immediately protected him, so that they not only fought recklessly, but also protected each other. While Manho and his subordinates were fighting eight people at once, Dagon was fighting two Iljin named Ijung Man and Cha Jin Wu. When Ijung Man managed to catch Dagon, the opposite happened because Dagon was able to counterattack him. But then Cha Jin Wu kicked him to distract Dagon, so then Ijung Man managed to catch Dagon from behind. Smiling, he thought this will be the end for Dagon. Young Man attacked Quan Dagon by lunging at him from behind and gripping him very tightly. Quan Dagon was very surprised when Jungman said that the winner in wrestling is determined if one of them manages to ambush from behind. Feeling a threat that could harm him, Quan Dagon tried to free himself with all his might. He tried to move his body to the right and left, up and down, but it didn't work. Jungman's grip was too strong. Quan Dagon realized that Jungman would perform a back suplex, a wrestling technique capable of killing his opponent if he was hit in the back of the head. Immediately, Quan Dagon racked his brains and blocked Youngman who was going to slam him by gripping the wall with all his might. When he felt that Youngman was having trouble doing his suplex, Quan Dagon immediately threw himself to the ground so that Youngman's grip finally broke free. Quan immediately stood up and prepared to attack Youngman. When he was about to throw his fist as hard as he could. Unfortunately, he suddenly felt an attack from behind. With his fast reflexes, Quan immediately dodged the kick that could have hit his head. It turned out that Jin Wu was the one who attacked him. He felt very annoyed because Young Min and Jin Wu were so great when they fought together. After saving Jung Min, Jin Wu said that he would attack Quan Dagon continuously and asked Jung Min to protect him from behind. Before Jung Min could answer, with his excellent Taekwondo skills, Jin Wu started throwing his kicks at Quan Dagon. Using his left arm, Quan parried Jin Wu's kick, and there was a very loud thumping sound, proving how strong Jin Wu was. Meanwhile, Young Min, who was now in charge of guarding Jin Wu, began to observe the fight between the two of them. Quan Dagon, who began to feel able to read Jin Wu's movements and fighting style, realized that Jin Wu's main ability was in his kicks. Quan Dagon tried to attack downwards and deflect the direction of his attack, but it turned out that Quan's prediction had been read by Jin Wu, and the man was able to dodge Quan Dagon's attack with agility. At this time, Quan Dagon became more and more aware that Jin Wu kept his distance from him, so he could launch his attacks in the form of kicks or fists, which were long attacks. Not only that, Quan Dagon also realized that during this fight, it was Jin Wu who carried out the attack in collaboration with Young Min, who was preparing to attack him when Quan Dagon was off guard. Having no other choice, Quan Dagon felt he had to defeat one of them first. Quan Dagon then focused himself and then started attacking Jin Wu with his fists. By reading Jin Wu and Young Min's movements, he managed to defeat both of them. After successfully defeating them both, Dagon, who felt emotional, then threatened Young Min by strangling him and said that they should not find trouble with Golden Dragon. Dagon's friends, who were still irritated, felt that they should teach them more lessons. Unfortunately, Dagon refused on the grounds that he was tired and had enough trouble facing his enemies. Dagon thanked colleagues who helped him. He also asked Araya and Gina who accidentally got involved in their fight. In contrast to Araya who blushed and thanked Dagon for helping them, Gina had a very angry face. He said that whatever the reason, Dagon and the others were no different from the opponents they defeated. Solving problems using physicality was a very bad way was what Gina said before grabbing Araya's hand and leaving immediately. Hearing this, Dagon could only remain silent. On the way home, Gina, who felt guilty for swearing at Araya's friends who had saved them, apologized to Araya. But Araya, who understood that Gina had reason to be angry like earlier, understood. Gina's brother, who was hospitalized, must have triggered a trigger in her. Meanwhile, Jin Mo and his cohorts decide to beat up Kim Wanwung, who has been looking down on them all and acting like he's the boss. Because of that, Jinmo is now the boss. However, just about to enjoy his day as a boss, Dagon came up to him. Without further ado, Dagon immediately asked a question. Did this Jinwo beat him with his new title of boss, or wanted to get beaten up and end everything right this minute? Frightened by Dagon, Jinwo immediately stood up politely and asked Dagoon to hit him lightly. 
But of course, Dagon gave Jinwo such a hard lecturing punch that he passed out. Dagon then told Jinwo's gang to stop bullying other class kids. With the gang members disbanding at school, now the boss of four classes at once is Quan Dagon. The bullies then became Dagon's impromptu fans. They were excited to get Dagon together and even invited them to play League of Legends together in the school's PC room. The children's behavior later became milder, and the female students could even hit them when they tried to tease Dagon. The next day, Dagon went to Kim Young Jung's class to check whether he and his friends were still bullying or had stopped. After that, he checked on the Shim Shanbo gang, which turned out to be no longer coming to school. He then went back to checking Jinwo's class, who was now a better person. But what Dagon didn't know was a bully that he didn't know was in the same class namely Susie, who was the queen of the school. He made Jinwo's comrades step on him. Jiseok then came to Susie's class after being called by his colleagues. He then said to form an alliance with Jiseok because he wanted to bully Dagon, who he felt was very annoying for not being interested in her. She wanted Dagon to be crazy about her like the other boys in her class, who always obeyed everything she said. After school hours were over, the bosses who had not been acquired by Dagon held secret societies. Consists of Jiseok, Dusik, Shenghua, Dojin, and Shenghun. Jiseok explains that the purpose of gathering them all is to subdue Dagon, the new student who is starting to subdue classes one by one. However, as expected, of course the bosses didn't want to form an alliance because they felt it was pointless to form one, especially since they weren't close friends and had no intention of forming one. Plus, Dusik has a bad relationship with Yiseok and constantly tries to provoke Jiseok's emotions. Luckily, Sung Hoon, who is the boss of the smart students, decided to stay calm in the heat of the moment and said that they shouldn't fight. Only Sung Hoon agreed to form an alliance, while the other bosses decided not to join and left on the spot. However, Sung Hoon had other thoughts. He has plans and calculations for the bosses and his figure seems to have become the leader of the alliance. This made Jiseok quite disturbed and curious about the real Seung Hoon. Kim Do Hyun, who was annoyed because Dojin was constantly being bullied and deprived of his money, decided to report this to Senior Byom Ho, who is a member of Deadly Six. When Dojin was hanging out with his friends and talking about money, alliances, and other trivial topics, suddenly they were handled by Senior Byom Ho and some of his colleagues. Everyone immediately saluted Senior Bayom Ho, including Dojin. However, when he saw Do Hyun's terrified figure behind Senior Bayom Ho, Dojin started to suspect something. The guess is right. Senior Bayom Ho came at the request of a fee from Do Hyun. Feeling irritated, he tried to ask Do Hyun, but the person he thought was very short sighted could only tremble and take cover behind Senior Bayom Ho's big body. Seeing Do Hyun's anxiety, the senior then said that he was safe as long as he was by his side, and there was no need to be afraid because he only taught his naughty juniors a little lesson. Hearing that, Dojin laughed loudly and mocked Bayom Sr., who still boasted that he was still in the organization, when in fact he wasn't. Senior Bayom Ho, who was provoked by Dojin's taunts, became emotional and slapped Dojin. He then cursed at Dojin and threw his fist at Dojin, and what surprised him was that Dojin felt no pain at all when he felt his fist, and instead mocked him for being weak after being kicked out of school. Only a few seconds later, Dojin countered Bayom Ho's senior fist with a very hard punch to his stomach, making the senior immediately feel extreme pain. Dojin hit him many times and even made him sit down and punched him really hard in the face. Dojin's friends who witnessed how he beat Bayom Ho's senior tried to stop him from his crazy actions. But unfortunately, Dojin, who is very obsessed with money, doesn't care. He gets annoyed at Do Hyun, who actually pays Byom Ho's senior to beat him instead of giving him the money. Hearing this, the two people who came with Byom Ho's senior became annoyed and provoked to join in in beating Dojin, who was very impolite. In South Korean culture, seniority is highly valued, and politeness to someone who is older is highly prioritized, no matter how bad the person is. Dojin, without hesitation, hit Bayom Ho's two senior friends and managed to send them both flying. Dojin's friends who see him having to fight three senior men who have big bodies try to help him, but Dojin forbids him because he only wants Dong Hyun's money for himself. With a terrible laugh,
Dojin continues to attack the seniors and smirks at Dong Hyun and asks for his money. Seeing this, Dong Hyun, who was afraid, immediately cursed and tried to run away. Unfortunately, Senior Byom Ho, who tried to hit him with a baseball bat, managed to make Dong Hyun run away. After successfully beating Senior Byom Ho and his friends, Dojin was very satisfied while his friends were scared because Senior Byom Ho was a member of a gangster. But Dojin wasn't afraid, and he believed that they were only pretending to be gangsters so that the other kids would respect them. The day changed. While walking in the halls of the school, suddenly Dagon was called by the former first grade boss, who had been defeated by Dagon. The former bosses believed that Dagon wanted to conquer all first class bosses. Dagon, who felt that the conversation was not important, tried to leave. But one of them prevented Dagon from leaving and explained one thing that is considered very important in this school, namely operating expenses money. At first, Dagon said that the class didn't need to raise money for the bosses, let alone give it away for such insignificant things. However, it turns out that the hierarchy and the embedded system are very strong. The money is not only collected and given to the boss, but also a few percent will be given to upperclassmen at level 2 and at level 3. Hearing this, of course, Dagon couldn't immediately open a big war by ordering his class children not to collect money, because this would trigger a fight, and Dagon would be seen as challenging all the bosses at school. Dagon was suddenly called by Jinmo to go to the schoolyard. There was Susie sitting. Annoyed by being toyed with, Dagon held Jinmo's head and didn't want to meet Susie. But seeing this, Susie got angry and told Dagon to remove Jinmo's head because only she was allowed to hit Jimmo. But Dagoon didn't want to and said that Susie should do as she said, because now her class is under her leadership. Hearing this, Susie just smiled and said that she was above all the rules because she was a queen, but Dagon didn't care about that. The unexpected thing was, Susie grabbed him by the collar and started to act awkward, her face red. Susie's intention was to subdue Dagon, but for some reason she couldn't. Her heart was beating fast, and she instead called Dagon as Appa. On the other hand, Dojin, who was with second-year seniors Ja Ok and Gong Myung, witnessed how Ja Ok beat up children who were late in paying the levy he had set. So far, Dojin has always heard Ja Ok lecture on Buddhist teachings and told him to always be patient and study the teachings straightly. But Ja Ok beats other kids almost unconscious for not giving them money. When Dojin asked how much money they got from the children, Dojin was surprised not to play because the amount was quite a lot and multiplied compared to when he was still in first grade. He becomes increasingly challenged to defeat Dagon and persuade the first graders to submit to him. After beating the children, Ja Ok invites his colleagues to buy sausages, when on the way there they meet Dagon and Susie, who are seen holding hands in their eyes. Ja Ok, who studies Buddhist teachings, approached them and said that they should not do any vulgar scenes in this supposedly sacred school environment. Dagon, who doesn't understand what Ja Ok is saying, calls him bald. Dagon realized, he remembered when he was still working at the convenience store, the manager didn't like it when Dagon brought up his hair that was falling out and almost bald. Dagon immediately apologizes to Jay Ok about his baldness, which Dojin immediately laughs at loudly. Hearing this, Ja Ok became very emotional and wanted to beat up Dagon. He told Dagon to leave, but he didn't want to because Dagon felt that they arrived first, so Ja Ok should have gone. The situation was getting heated, but Sojin immediately took out her cell phone and pretended to call her brother to come over to her. Hearing this, Gong Myung said that Ja Ok better not mess with them because Sojin's brother is very dangerous. Hearing this, Ja Ok became annoyed because he had to hold back his mounting anger because his underclassmen were considered to be ignorant of manners. But even if Ja Ok manages to control her anger and says they have to control Dagon sooner or later, Dojin doesn't accept that. He didn't want to wait too long and attacked Dagon and Susie who were walking. Reflexively, Dagon pulled Sojin's waist so he wouldn't get hit by Dojin, which was certainly very dangerous. Seeing Dojin's lion-like eyes hunting for their prey, Dagon immediately took off his school coat and prepared to fight. But Sojin's screams made him realize that other children were starting to crowd around and pay attention to them. Fortunately, because of that, Dojin abandoned his intention to fight. Later, 
Dojin is still upset that Dong Hyun doesn't come to school, and of course doesn't give him the requested money. Dojin then ordered the head of the class to come to Dong Hyun's house and ask for the collective money that should be given next week. However, feeling that the class president is unable to find Dong Hyun, Dojin decides to approach him who turns out to be truant. Dong Hyun, who met Dojin unexpectedly, became very surprised and almost cried. Immediately, the Dojin grabbed Dong Hyun's head and tried to smash it against the iron wire fence. His smile grinned horribly. At noon, Dagon conducted study sessions with several other children. Suddenly, Dojin came up to them and shooed Jinmo away because there was no empty seat for him. Jinmo, of course, doesn't want to give in because that would destroy his self esteem in front of the other kids. But Dojin then invites him to play rock, paper, scissors, which Jinmo loses in one hit. While Jinmo was feeling relieved because he had to give in because he lost the game, suddenly Dojin slapped his cheek so hard that he bounced all the way to the classroom wall. With a big smile, Dojin said that the slap was a punishment for players who lost in rock, paper, scissors. On the other hand, Xionghua talks with Gong Myung about their plans and also the new kid's strengths. Xionghua believes that Daegun is a child who is very strong and talented in fighting. On the other hand, Dojin is a strong and very flexible boy. He seems arrogant and likes to cause trouble, but is smart in honing his skills in fighting. Dojin challenges Dagon to fight in front of the sophomores if he loses in a coin betting game. Dagon then agreed to Dojin's request and they started playing, but no matter how many times they repeated the game, Dojin always lost. Finally, Dagon, who was tired of following Dojin's requests over and over again, decided that he would admit defeat so that Dagon's request to fight in front of the second year students would comply. Hearing this, Dojin smiled happily and left. Not long after that, Do Hyun came up to Dagon and begged Dagon to beat up Dojin, who made him borrow money from loan sharks using his name. He also asked Dagon to lose, because if Dagon wins, then Do Hyun will have to pay a sizable amount of money to Dojin. Dagon then asked whether Do Hyun was proficient in English, and Do Hyun immediately answered that he was quite proficient. Finally, Dagon agreed to beat Dojin for Do Hyun if he taught him English because he wanted to be smarter and be able to beat Jinwo in the English quiz. On the other hand, Dojin came to the school gym which was being prepared for his fight later. While looking around carefully, Dojin was getting impatient for this battle to be so fiery. When Dojin and his friends were talking, suddenly a group of second-year seniors came up to them. Immediately, Dojin's friends greeted the seniors with respectful bows. Seeing the politeness of the juniors, Zhou Ak became happy and gave some religious advice to the juniors one by one. Sheng Hua invited Zhou Ak to stand on the podium and give his remarks. On his way to the gym where he fought with Dojin, his colleagues came with him and said that Dagon shouldn't go alone, especially since the place would be full of seniors who were known to be very strong. Dagon told his comrades to go home, but they didn't want to. Suddenly Dagon got a message, and then he told his colleagues to come first, and we'll follow soon. Hearing this, his colleagues broke into a cold sweat because they had to come first without Dagon by their side. What made them even more surprised was that not only a few senior people came, but almost all the gangs, bosses, and bullies were there to witness. It turned out that the seniors were very curious about the figure of Dagon, who had started to become a rumor in school circles as a transfer child who had extraordinary strength and aura. Seconds went by very slowly. Dojin, who had patience as thin as a tissue, slammed down his cell phone and started to rage and order anyone to come forward to fight him. Dojin then challenges one of Dagon's comrades to fight him. But Sung Hwa prevented it, because it would violate the rules they had agreed upon. Amidst Dojin's arguing and tantrums, someone suddenly came. Everyone thought that Dagon had finally come, but he had not. Feeling irritated and being toyed with, Dojin punched him hard and grabbed him by the head very tightly. He also kicked and lunged with his strength that was starting to overflow. There was the sound of repeated blows. In the middle of the commotion, Dagon finally came and was greeted by his friends with great enthusiasm. When Dagon saw his colleague battered, Dagon immediately took off his school coat and threw it at the Dojin with great force. The throw hit the Dojin friends and their faces were hurt by it. 
Dojin, who saw this, became very surprised at Dagon's sudden attitude. Dojin then immediately attacked Dagon, who was preparing to fight him. Dojin's attacks were easily parried by Dagon. Dojin, who felt annoyed because none of his punches hit Dagon, plus he only seemed to dodge his attacks, made him curse out. The superior class boss then explained that what Dagon did was analyze his opponent's attack system, and after he succeeded, Dagon would counterattack. Those words were true. Not long after, Dagon started attacking Dojin using his punches and managed to hit Dojin on the right side of the stomach. Not only that, Dagon also used his leg to attack Dojin's knee so that he fell and was hit by a punch from Dagon. Dojin, who didn't expect Dagon's counterattacks to be so continuous and powerful, could only accept Dagon's attacks. No matter how many times Dojin tried to counterattack, he couldn't hit Dagon once. In fact, Dagon managed to beat him until he was battered and sitting in a pool of blood. Everyone who witnessed the match was silent waiting for what would happen next. However, Dojin, who never gave up, and felt that he still had the ability and strength to fight Dagon, stood up and prepared to ambush Dagon with his full strength. But unfortunately, even though he had attacked with all his might, he was still unable to injure Dagon, and instead got an even harder punch to his face. Dojin was eventually knocked unconscious. After successfully defeating Dojin, Dagon then said that upperclassmen shouldn't collect money from students, and he challenged Joe Ak. The upperclassmen who were annoyed with Dagon got up from their seats and started to surround Dagon, ready to attack Dagon and teach him a lesson. Immediately, Dagon's comrades woke up and prepared to help him, but Dagon said that he could handle it alone. Sure enough, Dagon was able to beat up the upperclassmen who surrounded him and challenged him. But in the midst of the commotion, Dojin rose again to attack Dagon, even though his body was covered in blood. Unfortunately, Dojin Stiesel couldn't beat Dagon and managed to win the match. In the morning, one of the class presidents was walking to the library, and there was Kim do Hyun waiting for him. Upon arrival, do Hyun showed a joyful face where he was very grateful that the class president would come and accept his request. He was sure that with the decision that the class president made, he would have a new and better life in the future. Seeing the strange attitude shown by Do Hyun, the class president wondered what exactly happened to Do Hyun. The class president at that time could only remain silent, but he was then surprised by Do Hyun's words saying that Kwan Dagon's next target was Kwok Dusik from Class 8, where he was a classmate. Hearing that, the class president was both shocked and happy because soon he would have a quiet life. Not only that, he also hopes that Cha Yanwu, who is also one of the people who often bully him, can be defeated. Meanwhile, in the schoolyard, Kwok Dusik was seen talking to someone on the phone, but soon he was surprised by Lee Seung Hoon, who suddenly appeared in front of him and asked who Dusik was calling at that time. Annoyed, Dusik answered his question and said that Sheng Hoon was interfering too much. Not wanting to make Dusik even more upset, he tried to break the situation, but unexpectedly Dusik suddenly asked about Quan Dagon, a new kid who always made him upset. Not wanting to make Dusik worry, he said that he currently had an extraordinary plan that would certainly be able to make Dagon unable to do anything. In Class 8, the class president was seen talking to someone who was none other than Cha Yan Wu, who often bullied him. Not infrequently, the class president gets unpleasant behavior that makes him inevitably always obey his words. Not long after, the classroom door suddenly opened, and a handsome man appeared, none other than Quan Dagon, who came to look for Kwok Dusik. Unfortunately, at that time, Kwok Dusik was not in class, and none of them knew when Dusik would return to class. Happy that his friend's prediction was correct, the class president took advantage of the situation by attracting Dagon's attention. Wanting his bully to be defeated, the class president finally made a scene by venting all his anger to Yanwu. After arguing for a long time, Yanwu finally couldn't hold back his emotions and punched the class president in the face until he fell down helplessly. Unlike what he imagined, Quan Dagon did not move from where he was standing and just stared at himself being beaten by Cha Yanwu. But after a long wait, Dagon slowly approached Yanwu and told him to stop. Because his orders were not listened to, he held Yanwu's hand until he felt pain. Although he was calm at the time, 
Quan Daegun became emotional when Yan Wu spat and got hit by the shirt of one of the female students in the class. Seeing that childish behavior, Daegun could not tolerate his attitude, so in the end, he hit Yan Wu's face until he fainted. At the same time, Kwak Dusik was already at the door and saw everything that happened. Not wanting to make any more noise in the class, Dagan invited Dusik to talk outside. Meanwhile, Seung Hoon went to the school library, which was known to be a gathering place for people who supported Kwan Dagan. There, he met Do Yon, who was so surprised to see a boss from ninth class coming to a place like this. Not sure what Seung Hoon was planning, with a meaningful smile, he said that he wanted to join the association. On the other hand, in class eight, Dagan and Dusik eventually got into an argument that stole the attention of the whole class. Knowing that Dusik was one of the students who collected money, Dagan asked him to return all the money, but Dusik refused and said that he had used all the money so that he currently had no money at all. Despite this, Dagan did not remain silent and continued to wait for Dusik to return the money until tomorrow. After saying the things he wanted to say, Dagan then walked out of the classroom, but from behind, Dusik attacked him brutally. Luckily, Dagan was in a state of readiness, so he could easily avoid the sudden attack. The two were eventually involved in a very fierce fight. Dagan was struggling with Dusik's attacks, which he thought were very fast and flexible. While busy avoiding Dusik's attacks, his mind was distracted by students recording their fights, where if Dusik's face was recorded on the video, then his aspirations to become a celebrity would have to end. Not wanting that to happen, in the fight, Dagan tried his best to make Dusik's face invisible in the recording. After a long time just avoiding Dusik's attacks, to stop their fight inevitably in the end, Dagan counterattacked Dusik by hitting his back and stomach to make him no longer move. Seeing Dusik unable to attack him anymore, at the end of their fight, Dagan warned Dusik to bring the money he collected tomorrow because if not, he would not hesitate to beat the face that became his valuable asset. After defeating Dusik, Dagan's next target was a class 5 student named Jiseok. Meanwhile, Seung Hoon was seen trying to persuade Do Hyun to lead the association. At first, Do Hyun seemed hesitant to accept the request, but he did not do anything after the class 9 boss gave him a sharp look. Seung Hoon said that he promised to always help Dagan to eradicate all the bullies in the school that made the atmosphere in the school chaotic. Then, on the other hand, Jiseok who knew that he was Dagon's next target after Dusik was defeated, he then became anxious and hurriedly left school. But on the way, he was intercepted by Dagon, who gave a creepy glare. Feeling himself weak, without a fight between the two of them, Jiseok easily gave all the money he had collected, so that Dagon's mission this time ended quickly. In Class 9, Xiong Hoon, who was getting ready to go home, was surprised by the arrival of Dusik, who ran towards him emotionally and cursed at Seung Hoon. Not long after, Jiseok also came, which was all the work of Seung Hoon who gathered the two of them. Realizing that Seung Hoon had fooled them both, with his emotions piqued, Dusik immediately attacked him, but the attack was easily avoided by Seung Hoon, who then responded by kicking Dusik very hard in the face. Shocked by Seung Hoon's action, Jiseok, who had not yet attacked, could not move after Seung Hoon hit his face until fresh blood came out of his nose. With a cynical smile, Sheng Hoon challenged the two of them to a fight with him, but it seemed like their strength meant nothing to Sheng Hoon, as he could easily defeat them both. At the end of his words, Sheng Hoon said that he would make Quan Dagon the boss, and no one could stop him. On his way home, Dagon was followed by a girl he once saved. The girl said she did it all because on the way, she saw someone suspicious following Dagon, and strangely the person suddenly disappeared and left her alone. Knowing that someone else was following him, Dagan gave her his phone number and asked her to call him if she wanted to say something. Because it was getting dark, the girl asked Dagan to take her home and on the way the girl thanked him for saving her in the past. In addition, she also represented her friend, Ji Yin, apologizing for saying bad things to him. Although at this time Ji Yin could not apologize directly, but she was sure that sooner or later Ji Yin would come to see him to apologize, so she hoped Dagon would not hate her too much. Hearing such words made Dagon a little surprised and didn't mind it at all. Compared to that, Dagon seemed to be curious about Class 9 and asked if there was bullying there. 
According to the girl's information, initially there were some bullies, but Ji Yin managed to defeat them, and also thanks to Sheng Hun's leadership as class president, the bullies finally realized what they were doing. According to her, Sheng Hun has a good leadership spirit, and they also listen to Sheng Hun's words well, so that the current situation in his class is very good. Feeling that he had nothing to worry about, Dagon did not delve further into the class. The next day, Do Yan was walking down the hallway in anger as Xiong Hun disrupted the good relationship between him and Dagon. Not only that, seeing the look in his eyes like a snake, he was sure Xiong Hun was not a loser like he thought, but a bully. Then upon entering the classroom, he saw Dagon with Xiong Hun, who informed him that he had told Dagon about their conversation last time. Dagon thanks Do Yan for working hard in his short time and tells him that his duties will now be taken over by Sheng Hun. Do Yan didn't accept that and tried to tell Dagon that he was the leader of Class 9, which meant he was a bully. Hearing that, Sheng Hun and Do Yan argued a bit, but Dagon quickly managed to stop them. To convince Dagon, Sheng Hun said he would work his best and would help him to limit all the bullies in the school, especially now he's not collecting money anymore. Because his words sounded sincere, Dagon also formalized Sheng Hun as his accomplice to replace Do Yan. Then before they officially started, Sheng Hun thought that they should gather the people who joined the Bully Violence Committee. At the meeting place, many did not expect Sheng Hun and Dagon to become close, and many of them could not accept it. Although many do not accept his presence, he thinks that his presence can help them to beat the bullies and destroy the rules of collecting money in this school. He is the leader as well as the class president, which as we know the collection is conducted by the class president. Not only that, he is also a class cabinet council, and he has connections regardless of grade, so it can be said that he knows all about the flow of collection, what grade class that collected money, and who they have to beat. If they wanted to destroy the collecting of money completely, Seung Hoon only had one answer, and that was to give in to the third grade leader, Baek Su Yuk. But for some reason, senior executives including Baek Su Yuk are currently absent. Therefore, the only way they can do is to beat the second grades, where if they block the collection of second grades linked to third grades, they can attract the third grades that are hiding. But before that, apart from collecting money, they have to make sure to clean up everything up, where Dagon must have finished all the first grades before. One of them is Ku Xiunghua, who comes from Class 7, Although he is known to be great, but he is also labeled as a garbage that must be cleaned up where he is very obsessed with skills that make him known as the devil because he's putting many kids in a fight. He did that just to analyze what characteristics each sport had through their martial arts. With his obsession, he was sure that Sheng Hua would meet Dagon first because he must have been interested in the skills shown by him when he fought against Park Dojin in the auditorium last time. After their meeting ended, Sheng Hun entered a holy church where a man was waiting for him. From the conversation between the two of them, Sheng Hun discussed a familiar name, Baek Su Yuk, where it turned out that the man was looking for his whereabouts. Unable to find him, the man didn't know what to do and asked about Sheng Hun's plan. Sheng Hun casually said that he didn't need to worry because everything was currently going according to his plan. He would send him a signal when he was sure everything was ready and he was sure that this plan would be a huge storm. The next day, the school saw Sheng Hua talking to a male student named Bai Iku to use him as bait to meet with Quan Daegun. Through a chat with Sheng Hun, he said that he had something to say to Daegun. Sheng Hun then contacted Daegun and told him about the chat he received and rushed to the meeting location that had been planned. Meanwhile, Sheng Hua was seen waiting for Daegun's arrival by observing him from afar. Seeing Dagon's extraordinary strength made him even more excited to become someone even stronger. While he was talking to his partner, he was surprised by the appearance of a man named Shim Sangbo. Then, at the same time, Dagon came to the meeting place mentioned by Seung Hoon and found Sheng Hua's men preparing to attack him. The one-on-one -on -one battle was inevitable, with the boxing skills of Sheng Hua's men then unceremoniously attacked him, but Dagon managed to avoid it easily. Dagon counterattacked by kicking his legs and hitting his face at once until he was finally knocked down. Not only that, Dagon mercilessly attacked Sheng Hua's men brutally. 
although their numbers were said to be quite large. For Dagon, it was not a difficult thing because with his abilities, he managed to defeat them all. Seeing all his men losing, Shenghua sent Shim Sangbo to defeat Dagon. But on his way to their battleground, he was intercepted by Dagon's three friends who were members of the Bully Violence Committee. No Manho was the first to attack Shim Sangbo. It seemed that he was very difficult to keep up with the speed of his attacks, so that he was repeatedly hit by his attacks. Even so, Manho was able to survive and turn things around, where he managed to attack Shim Sangbo until he fell. Meanwhile, Dagon's two other friends named Ho Jong and Zhang Min were seen looking for Dagon, but both were intercepted by Xiong Hua's men named Che Choman. Having extraordinary speed, both of them look very difficult, so Choman always finds a gap to attack them repeatedly. On the other hand, Manho, who looks overwhelmed after fighting against Sangbo. Although it is said that he won the battle, he also received so many attacks that made not a few parts of his body injured. While sitting weakly, he was surprised by the arrival of Dagon, who asked what he was doing here and what really happened. Meanwhile, it seems that Xionghua did not expect that Sangbo, who has extraordinary boxing skills, could be defeated by Manho. Because of Sangbo's defeat, Shenghua was disappointed because he could not see the second round where Quan Daegun fought against Shim Sangbo. Although it did not fulfill his expectations, he thought he had gotten some useful information. Meanwhile, Ho Jong and Zhong Min were seen still fighting with Choman, despite getting so many attacks. But they both had strong defenses that made Choman a little frustrated with them. But when the two were cornered, fortunately, Li Seung Hoon came at the right time and saved them. Then shortly, Dagon came along with Manho, who was injured quite badly, and in the end, now Dagon faced directly with Xiong Hua. The two were involved in a fight, where Xiong Hua was the first to attack. Dagon managed to avoid attack after attack, but it was clear that Dagon's movements were unstable, so it was not uncommon for Xiong Hua's attacks to almost hit him. But even so, it cannot be denied that Dagon's strength is so extraordinary that he can defeat Xiong Hua in a very fast time. The next day, after Xiong Hua's defeat, word spread throughout the school that Quan Dagon had now become the first grade leader. All the students were talking about it, and not a few students were amazed, because considering that he was a new student, but Dagon had been able to get such a big achievement, even though he was a bad student in terms of study. Meanwhile at Bangun Technical High School, many students had found out about the news that Dagon was now the first grade leader, and many of them did not expect it. On the other hand, while Dagon was asking Xiong Hoon about Manho's condition, their conversation was distracted by the arrival of Baek Suzi, who congratulated him on his new position. But the congratulations she gave were completely ignored by Dagon, making Suzi annoyed and pulling Dagon's shirt collar until it accidentally opened wide enough. Seeing the incident, Suzy's face turned red with embarrassment, and she frantically apologized for what she did. Because he felt awkward, Dagon asked about Suzy's intentions and purpose for meeting him. Suzy said that Dagon should first greet her as the queen. Because of that nonsensical talk, Ho Jong slightly mocked her, making Suzy feel embarrassed and unconsciously forced Dagon to give her his phone number. Dagon had no other choice, and immediately gave his number to Suzy. And then after that, Susie left while holding her embarrassment. After Susie's departure, as the first grade leader, it was Dagon's duty to greet the third and second grade leaders. With the note given by Seung Hoon about who he had to beat, Dagon then walked towards the second grade hallway and entered a class. Upon entering, he saw a male student who was dying after being strangled by one of the class. Considered a stranger, one of the students in the class prevented him from entering, but without thinking, Dagon immediately hit the student right in the face until he fainted unconscious. Then, after that, he finally met a male student named Yegil and greeted him. Considered rude when giving greetings, some of his men became angry and immediately attacked him, but the attack was certainly not a problem for Dagon because he could easily defeat them all. As a bully and collecting money, it made Dagon very angry and unceremoniously attacked Yegil and smashed his head against the wall. Not stopping there, when Yagil was helpless, one of his friends came and ran towards him brandishing a cutter. Despite having a weapon, Dagon was not at all afraid, and immediately brutally beat the boy, 
followed by the other second-grade male students who tried to attack Dagan but ended up in vain. After taking out the bullies in the second grade by beating them all blindly, this was immediately recognized by their teacher so he was called to the teacher's office. Once there, Dagan was severely scolded, leaving him speechless because he knew that the teacher was completely unaware of the project he was doing. Not long after, the chairman came to the school and warned the teacher to always be kind to Dagan. Dagan then met the chairman and sensed that something unusual was happening, especially since it was their first meeting after the project meeting. Meanwhile, a male student who is the second grade's captain named Juan Jawak looks very angry when he sees his friends in the second grade have been beaten by someone. Based on the information he got, he found out that it was all the actions of the first grade student, Quan Dagan. His anger was unstoppable making him plan to take revenge for what happened to his friends. While on the other hand, the reunion of Dagan and Chairman surprised Dagan. The two then engaged in a serious conversation until the Chairman said about the project Dagan was doing. With a mocking look, he said that he almost forgot about the project because there was no progress. Therefore, the Chairman said that Dagan should kill all the bullies there. Then, Wan Jawak finally reached Dagan's class and brutally beat his friends. No matter how hard they tried to attack him, they were no match for his super-strong strength and huge body type. When a female classmate entered the classroom and was about to be attacked by Jawak, Dagan arrived at the right time and saved her. His sharp, hateful gaze was clearly visible, as if he was ready to kill everyone in front of him. The two of them engaged in a fierce battle that drained quite a lot of energy. Jawak's strength at that time was arguably very great, because after his struggle to find the power of the Buddha, he managed to enter Nirvana, where he could hit Dagon so fast that he looked like he had 1,000 hands. That power turned out to make it quite difficult for Dagon to face Jawak, but even so, with his strength, he managed to defeat Jawak until he could not move his body even once. Then, to celebrate Dagon's victory, together with his friends, they held a party, and they all spent the night together.